Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a very, very important one. Please welcome with me as we invite on stage Mr. Ibrahim Al Ajami, the head of ventures of Mubadala Investment Company, as he talks about accelerating breakthrough innovation through investment. The stage is yours, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, how's everybody doing? I think I'm, I don't know if I'm between you and lunch or you already had lunch, either or. I think it's terrible timing. Uh, I'd like to uh, share with you uh, about Mubadra, our story in technology and in ventures, uh, specifically in ventures, and uh, then speak a little bit about what we're focused on, areas that are interesting for us, some perspectives on venture capital and the industry and what's happening with technology, which many of you are familiar with. And then I will wrap up with some perspectives about being a venture capitalist, uh, some reflections uh, on that. So uh, Mubadla is a global financial institution. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Uh, it is uh, one of the sovereign wealth funds here in Abu Dhabi. We operate in over 50 countries around the world. And think of us as a very partnership-oriented, uh, on-the-ground, active investor and builder of businesses. We have very large um, investments in energy. We are big in semiconductors and metals and mining. We have aerospace businesses, healthcare, financial services, uh, real estate. We also uh, operate a, an asset management business where we invest in different asset classes like private equity and ventures and hedge funds. Uh, we're fairly large in the United States. We're also big in Europe and in Latin America. And over the next five to 10 years, you will see us increasingly active in China and in Asia, just given uh, the shifts that are happening uh, in the East. In ventures, which is what we did, we started ventures in 2016. Uh, really, it was a commitment around technology, recognizing that technology is no longer a sector. Technology is foundational to every other sector. And we made an active decision that we'll have to start really being very active in, in ventures. And, uh, and what does that really mean? It really means for us to start investing much earlier in the life cycle. Why? Because we want it to be uh, working with the founders across that journey as they go from a startup. And to do that, you'll have to be on the ground. You'll have to be really part of the community. So the mission we've developed is to partner early with visionary founders. This is a business that's all around people. It's about people. It's about what are the exceptional management teams and the founders that are building great companies. So the value proposition for a lot of these great founders who have the ability to choose money from many other investors is we want to partner with you and we take a very long-term perspective and we will do everything we can by leveraging Mubadala's resources, assets, scale, companies to support you as, uh, as a founder and as, as an entrepreneur. So you fast forward three years. We started this at the end of 2016. You fast forward three years and today, if you look at Mubadala's venture and technology portfolio, um, for those in the investment business, we have uh, a US team that's based out of San Francisco where we invest directly into companies. Uh, we also have a fund of funds business where we invest into other managers because these are an important part of our strategy. We invest out of Europe, in Europe, out of London. And uh, we also have a team here in Abu Dhabi that's looking at uh, MENA investments. We've made a very large commitment to the SoftBank Vision Fund that many of you have heard of. Uh, that's also a big part of our technology strategy. And then in addition to that, we have other areas of, in, of technology investments in China, in Russia. We have a partnership with, uh, with the government in France. France has been really interesting, what's happening there in technology. So it's become a global platform that is very much grounded and embedded in local community. Uh, Ventures is a community craft. Ventures is around working closely with management teams like work day in and day out that endure the pains of building their businesses uh, day in and day out. So even though we started as a sort of global platform, we've really embedded the strategy very much grounded in the local community. The fund of funds business is a very important business for us. 
but we seed managers, we support managers, we invest in managers um, in Silicon Valley. That's a big part of our business. And in Europe, we started, and now in MENA, where we started to partner with uh, what we call uh, pilot and emerging managers. So that strategy is two pieces to it. We have the established managers. These are highly regarded, uh, track record, very established, successful managers. And then we also have emerging managers, so people that want to start their funds and we believe have a unique point of view. Uh, they have an interesting strategy. Maybe they've worked with other funds or they've started companies before and they want to be managers. So the ability to partner and seed them, some might work, some might not, but we view this as an important part of our responsibility to also build that ecosystem of managers and, and seed managers. Hub 71 is also an entity that's managed uh, by Mubadla, but supported and really uh, set up by the government of Abu Dhabi. Hub 71 is what I refer to as Abu Dhabi's calling to initiate and build a very successful, thriving startup ecosystem in the future. And our strategies there is it all starts with community because again, startups and founders go through many ups and downs. Community helps them. Um, you're sharing ideas, you're collaborating with other startups. And then what you do is you build a whole ecosystem around it. You have capital, you have founders and startups, you have technology partnerships, you have space, you have health insurance, you have ability to set up families and homes. So how do we, you have market access, so how do we support all these companies and startups uh, with an ecosystem that enables them to grow from an idea to a seed company, to an early stage company? And what one day we hope, 10 years from now, we always get asked, what is success for Hub 71? Success for Hub 71 is that one day we have a, a globally enduring technology company that started in Hub 71, uh, like Airbnb, like Uber. Uh, so these are very, very successful tech companies that actually started in incubators. Why do founders choose us? Great founders have the ability to choose investors. In technology and in venture, the, the best, most successful founders choose their investors. Well, we have four main drivers of differentiation. Number one, again, we have local teams that are very founder-centric. They work with the founders. We work with them, we support them, we interact with them. So we like to say, how are we choosing visionary founders uh, that are very strong also in execution, but learn and grow? We look for this very important learning dynamic. So the ability to have a team that's working with the founders on the ground, but at the same time taps into this global platform that Mubadla is very, very special in. We have all relationships and access and businesses all over the world. For example, for a lot of our founders, we can introduce them to you know, all our companies in the portfolio around the world, whether that's a mining company or an energy company or a data center business or a healthcare hospital or a bank. How do we open doors for them? And last but not least, which is very, very unique again, is once we identify a winning company, is we can partner with that company for many, many years, providing them capital and support. So we call that the life cycle investor. And uh, for the great, great founders that will build great businesses, we want to tell them that you don't need any other investor other than Mubadla over the long term. We have now um, built our capabilities in also opening doors to Mubadla's portfolio, um, our energy assets around the world, our healthcare assets. So we call this the value creation capacity, our value creation capability, which is how do we introduce our software companies. And now we have case studies where we have proven ourselves. Uh, Balbix is a cybersecurity company out of San Francisco. We introduced them to our very large semiconductor company in New York. They did an assessment and in one week, they identified over 500 vulnerabilities uh, in their surface uh, in all their nodes and all their networks. So that's an example of how what we say to our assets, we say, listen, we've invested in this early stage technology company. We can't, we don't force any of our assets to make investment decisions, but uh, customer decisions. But what we say is, this is also a portfolio we would appreciate if you would give it a serious look and then we will support that company as they engage with our assets. And now we have multiple examples and we're learning how to support these companies, how to open doors when we call a customer, when do we trigger a relationship? When do we knock on a door uh, and when we don't? And that's uh, a very, very important ca capacity that not many investors around the world have. I'm going to now shift a little bit to talk about some of our investment themes. 
Um, you've been hearing, I'm sure, a lot about this uh, in the conference. Um, software, software, software. Uh, software is a great investment asset. Software businesses are able to scale very quick, very big, um, because the marginal cost of that development is really near zero once you really get what we call product market fit. Every company in the future needs to be built on a software foundation. So all our investments are really built on software. I have some pictures here. Embark is a autonomous trucking technology. Uh, their goal and their mission um, is to uh, is develop autonomous technology for trucks. That's really a software business. Uh, Recursion Pharma, which is one of my favorite, uh, even though you're not supposed to have favorites, but it is one of my favorite, um, is a, an AI and software company for drug discovery. So what it does, it, you, uh, it takes hundreds of millions of pictures, you really using your smartphone technology, your camera and your smartphone, of diseased cells. So cells in our body and ultimately matches these diseased cells with compounds. That's a software. Uh, Glovo is a food delivery company out of Barcelona. It's in Europe, it's in Latin America. How does Glovo really manage the network between restaurants um, and homes um, and between delivery uh, and a delivery network that is able to determine when they need to pick up food, how often do they wait, uh, how do they optimize the network? That's really all software. So I like to say that you know, every company, any company in the future should be built on software. It's nothing new. Mark Andreessen, 10 years ago, said software is eating the world. Uh, now the world is eating software. So, so that's a very important secular shift that we believe is going to continue. Let me now delayer that and pick on a couple of things. The very interesting areas for us, and I'll talk about this smart enterprise and the cloud. The cloud, I'm going to say, is probably the most important secular shift happening today and over the next 10 years. Today, 3% of all computing environments, 3%, um, are on-prem, which means that these companies build their servers or they, they buy servers and they build their software um, on-premises in their companies. All that will move to the cloud and will be managed by the cloud. The future of the enterprise over the next 10 to 20 years, people that will work on the enterprise uh, and will work in companies are people that don't know a world without a smartphone. So how does that impact productivity and engagement and collaboration and communication? We call that the smart enterprise of the future. Uh, the world of logistics and mobility is transforming. How do you connect shippers and distributors around the world? We're seeing very interesting technologies in electrification, interesting technologies in autonomous uh, technologies. That's going to shift how cities are designed. So again, we take sort of a 10-year view. In venture, if you want to succeed and, 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 and um, generate returns and make money, because that's really what a venture investor is supposed to do, you can't look at the present. You have to take a very long-term perspective and you have to make an investment decision and a bold investment decision uh, today. Healthcare is an area that Mubadla is very serious and very committed to. Uh, we are spending a lot of time really understanding how software is transforming drug discovery, how software is transforming how hospitals and patients are connected. When you get sick, how are you, through your smartphone, determining whether you should go to the hospital or whether you should potentially just go to the pharmacy or whether the pharmacy should deliver a medicine to you. So the role of software in personalized medicine, the role of software in drug discovery, and the role of software in what we call outcome-based solutions. Um, this is not just you know, getting a generic uh, treatment. This is very specific to your genetic uh, makeup, to your genetic DNA. So that's, again, shifting how we think about healthcare and, si and medical science. Uh, Financial technology is a very, very interesting area for us. Banks uh, today uh, have been built on these legacy infrastructure, right? You, how do you build a bank? Uh, well, you build a brand and you build all your compliance functions and uh, you set up retail shops around the city because people want to go ba open bank accounts. Um, how many here in the room, I'm just curious, open their bank account by not going to a retail shop, by not signing a piece of paper. So, uh, you know, if I was to sort of fast forward five years from now, um, the whole room here will be an audience where you actually never visited a teller to open a bank account. Actually, it's all done via your smartphone. If you look at, um, and we're very early in this, in this, uh, uh, in this journey, 
In the US, you have a couple of banks, uh, the likes of SoFi and Chime. In Europe, you have a couple of banks called Revolut and Monzo in the UK. These are very interesting, what we call digital neobanks. Um, in, in China, you have, uh, you have WePay, you have Ant Financial, um, and I think we're going to see a lot more of them in the region. If you, if you look at the, if you add up all the value of all the financial technology companies in the world, all of them, there's 200 of them, um, a, a, a billion plus technology, financial technology, they don't add up to the value of uh, one of the largest top five banks in the US. So just think about the opportunity just in financial services and using data to transform financial services. Uh, we've made uh, a couple of bets here in the region, especially with Bezat and Midchains, where you'll see more around how does uh, software uh, uh, really enable companies to become even financial institutions because they have so much information about their employees and their customers. And last but not least is what we call consumer and marketplaces. These are shared experiences, how sort of a brand doesn't really exist on its own, but a brand is a part of a network, and how does the network fuel the brand? Uh, we invested in this company in the UK called Kazoo. Um, really, Kazoo is around uh, buying a used car. So in the UK, uh, it's a very fragmented market. If I want to go buy a used car, um, I'll just get online, and then I'll go to the dealer, and then I might like the car, I'll drive the car. Uh, well, what Kazoo does is you'll get online, you'll look at the car you want. Uh, it's been tested, it's been refurbished, it's, been done, it's gone through significant amount of uh, verification and the car gets delivered to your home. So these are the kind of experiences that transform um, how products and services are, are sold. Uh, a few commentary around the world of technology and, the, and uh, private markets and public markets. This is a very big topic right now. I'm sure that uh, you read a lot about it. Um, all of a sudden, we went from loving the unicorn to hating the unicorn. Uh, you know, over $1 billion valuation, that's crazy. These companies are terrible. Um, at the end of the day, it's about strategy, management, and execution. Great companies that have exceptional management teams with a very clear strategy and execute very well ultimately can build very, very big uh, uh, businesses. For us, uh, we as Mubadla, when we first started investing in ventures and in technology, we were told that, oh, you guys are VC tourists. VC tourists are investors that show up and then a couple of years later they leave. Uh, that's not what we do. We are here to stay. We're committed. And uh, founder-friendly VCs where we, you know, we support the founders through the journey. We carry uh, part of that journey on our shoulders, just like some of the more successful venture firms in the world do. Uh, this is an interesting chart. It shows uh, that over the past 30 years, the number of technology companies going public that are profitable has significantly gone down. So there's like this mindset and this expectation that, oh, we don't have to be profitable. And I think that uh, um, this is a serious, serious dynamic that you're seeing starting to shift now, where, again, investors are demanding clarity on profitability, clarity on business model sustainability, clarity on, um, on uh, unit economics, which is, you know, I can't sell a product for a dollar that's costing me $5 uh, to make. The cloud infrastructure, I just mentioned that, is probably the most significant secular shift happening in the world today. If you are not paying attention to this secular shift, please, please, please pay very big attention to it. There's been two secular shifts in the past decade that are very big. One is called mobile, um, and one is called social. This is a significant secular shift that I think is going to lift, because now it's moving to the enterprise. Uh, if you have been reading in the past week, uh, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and now Google, I think, um, yesterday on Monday announced, you saw these three companies are uh, witnessing over 50% growth year on year in their cloud infrastructure businesses. So this is significant amount of growth uh, because uh, companies are moving a lot of their managed enterprises to the cloud um, and customers can access all their technologies and all the services really via their mobile applications and their mobile phones. Uh, so this is a very significant shift that we are very focused on. We think there's a lot of opportunities with enterprises over the next decade. Autonomous mobility is coming. This is a picture 
a recent picture where we took a tour around Silicon Valley in an autonomous car. And uh, it's really cool to go around the city with nobody driving. Uh, five years ago, I think that was, you know, unimaginable. We think this is coming. We don't know if it's five years or 10 years. It's still early. It's venture-like risk, but it's coming. Waymo, uh, which is the technology company subsidiary of Google, probably has the most number of miles and most advanced, but all technology companies are making big bets because it will transform how cities are designed and ultimately how we people and humans live our lives. And uh, a couple of more comments. Unfortunately, you can't see this very well because of the chairs. But this is a chart that shows over the past 100 years. Um, the blue bar is the months of growth of a cycle, and the, um, uh, the gray one is month of recession. Months of recession. So uh, we haven't had any recession over the past decade, which is very, very different and very, very um, surprising and probably concerning. So if you're an investor, you should pay a lot of attention to where we are in the cycle today. No one of us can predict, and um, uh, I wouldn't dare to predict. Um, we don't invest based on predictions, but you should just be a little bit more thoughtful and careful about where we are in the business cycle. We don't know if it'll happen next year. We don't know if it'll happen in 10 years. Uh, ultimately, you just have to make a, uh, a take a perspective and and a, a perspective on probability of whether that's going to happen. That should drive your investment decisions. But this is a very interesting dynamic that we haven't seen unfold in our history. And then on the right side is uh, an interesting chart that uh, I, I actually recently saw. Because we get a lot of uh, feedback around technology um, being uh, overhyped or overrated, or you know we've missed the tech cycle, or all the technology innovation has happened. I think we're at early innings. We're just very early uh, in our story, in our journey. Um, uh, Facebook and Google have built um, $1.5 trillion businesses, $1.5 trillion businesses uh, by transforming advertising. Uh, and all of you know that the business model for Google and Facebook, since they're free services to everybody, is actually an advertising model. Um, just imagine what happens with transportation, education, healthcare, and financial services over the next 20 years. So we should expect to see more trillion dollar businesses created over the next 20 years in these sectors. Um, and that is very, very exciting for an investor in a financial institution like Mubadla. If you fast forward Mubadla uh, by 2030 or even 2040, uh, our goal is to have uh, trillion dollar technology companies in our portfolio that we as Mubadla identified and partnered with over a 10 to 15 to 20 year period. That's the vision of our leadership uh, when it comes to uh, technology. Last but not least, um, as a venture capitalist uh, who spent um, really the past 10 years investing in technology on behalf of Mubadla, a couple of learnings and observations. This is a very, very, very competitive industry and you just have to remain open to learning, humble about learning, and just curious every single day. Curious, curious, curious. Uh, we wake up every day and we must remind ourselves uh, that we don't know very much. It's the only way to succeed in this industry. I like to highlight TikTok is a great example of, a, of an application that faster than any other application in the industry went to a billion users in less than five years. So before TikTok, people said, well, there's no way. I mean, that's it, Instagram and Facebook and what's it. There's, there is no social application that can be created that could reach a billion people or, or have that kind of scale. Uh, this is probably not only just a social, in it, but it, is, it will become one of the most important media companies uh, in the future. Uh, so global growth, speed, and scale. Just be ready for it. And as an investor, constantly uh, uh, watch out for it. Uh, Bezat is an example I love to say as a founder in Dubai that I uh, respect a lot. Uh, when Talal reached out to me, uh, one of the things that I really, really appreciate about him is that he had researched all the investors in the world that invest in tech. And then he wrote them and he said, this is why I'm reaching out to you because you have invested in these companies and this is why potentially Bezat is an interesting company for you. So, you know, the best founders 
go and search for their investors. So us as an investor, I'm constantly looking for these great founders that are also looking for us. Uh, and you need to ask yourself all the time, why are these founders looking for us? And why are we good investors uh, for these founders? Oris is a great example of a, of a company, uh, and it will be the last example I give today. Uh, this is the point about always being open to learning and curious. Uh, we saw Oris, uh, which is a medical technology robotics company. Uh, we saw it three years ago, and it was valued at a billion dollars. And guess what my initial reaction when I saw the company at a billion dollars? My initial reaction is this is too expensive. Too, the valuation is too high. I didn't do research, I didn't learn about it and understand them. It was just, it was just an, a biased reaction, immediate biased reaction that this is too expensive at a billion valuation. It got, so we, we said no to the investment, we passed on it. It got acquired 12 months later, 12 months later for $5 billion by Johnson & Johnson. So imagine how I felt, pretty stupid and silly, and $5 billion a year later. Um, Great venture investors miss a lot of great companies. Uh, but great venture investors are always checking their biases and always asking themselves, what is it that I'm missing? What is it that I'm missing? Uh, so it's, it's really a, a, an industry is about learning and about being curious. And if you are a great learner and uh, have a lot of curiosity and are willing to sort of take a bet and have the courage and conviction, then I think the venture industry is very interesting for you. And this is the early, early stages um, of the technology journey. Thank you for your time, and thank you for listening about Mubadla.